Among the highlights of the last year has been our um, acquisition of three incredible collections. The manuscript of Jane Austen's unfinished novel, The Watsons, the archive of John le Carré, and our seventh prime ministerial archive, Edward Heath. Of course, the Bodleian isn't just a great academic library. We have a duty, which we take very seriously, to um, make sure that these kinds of uh, materials that are really part of the nation's memory are available to the whole public. I've got one of the files for Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy open in front of me and it's incredible to see the first uh, surviving version written um, in, in ink in Le Carre's own hand. He cuts up parts of um, the latest version that he's particularly pleased with and adds it to a next version of the manuscript. The first sentence of this chapter begins, Mr. George Smiley was not naturally equipped for hurrying in the rain. And then in the third version, it's Mr. George Smiley was not naturally equipped for hurrying the rain at dead of night. So our students are going to be able to get a sense of the, the evolution of, of a great work like Tinker Taylor, Soldier Spy. I'm looking at the archive of Edward Heath and um, one of the things that a personal archive like this gives you is an insight into different aspects of, uh, of an individual's life. Um, here I'm looking at some photographs that Heath himself took in the 1930s when he was a student observer at the Nuremberg rallies, for example. So we see the rows of uh, goose-stepping Nazis. We even see Hitler in an open-top car. He records in his diary, which we also have in, in the archive, that he was invited to a drinks party by uh, Goebbels, uh, who he described as the most evil man that he'd ever met. And then later in the war, um, Heath became an enlisted serviceman and he uh, eventually gained a rank of, of major. And you can see here the more personal side of what a senior officer was responsible for, which is the morale of their, their troops. And so here we have a, probably a unique handcrafted program for a production of Aladdin that he got his troops to put on, um, probably, I guess, as a, as a kind of um, a New Year's pantomime. We also see um, some fantastic material about uh, his regimental football team. And then just bizarrely, uh, at the end of this, this, this group of papers, probably by accident, are his notes of attending the Nuremberg trials in 1946. And it's wonderful to see somebody who became a very senior politician um, forming their own political ideas through these momentous events. One of the most interesting things about the manuscript of Jane Austen's The Watsons is just how ordinary it looks, densely covered in Jane's very careful handwriting, lots of crossings out, lots of reworkings of the text, but just in this very simple format. And this is really the, the only surviving uh, example of this particular unfinished novel. And it's extraordinary to think of her today as a cultural phenomenon. I mean, she's the female Shakespeare, and yet those stories, those characters that we know so well, have such humble beginnings.